Carl. Hey, this is Dylan. Dylan, how are you, man? Doing pretty good. How are you? I'm doing all right, thanks. Yeah, um, I guess how far back did it begin for you? Like, did you always struggle with your mental health? No, not me personally. Um, I, I served in the military for 10 years. And when I left active duty after Desert Storm, my transition was not the smoothest that it could have been. But fortunately, I got connected with some mentors that helped me through that process. And then back in the late 2000, 2009 time frame, I heard then Secretary of the VA, Shinseki, say that 18 veterans commit suicide every day. And I had, through my sales marketing experience, built a large network of veterans that some of whom I served with and others that I just connected with through this network. And we decided to take that network and intentionally try to positively impact the veteran suicide issue. For sure. And uh, connect veterans in hometowns all across the country with other veterans that are just like them, same military background, similar to they would be able to relate to each other then too, eh? Correct. Yeah. Um. So I grew into the nonprofit that started it. And uh, it's very focused on connecting uh, whether they're soldiers, sailors, airmen, marines, and they leave active duty. We want to connect them with life in the same branch of the service, just like them, in their hometown, wherever they choose to go live after they leave the military. Hmm. And that person we call a guide we want them to be somebody that has previously transitioned and now they're established in their community it doesn't matter what they do only that they've gone through their transition and they're comfortable now and what their life is so they can help the new veteran kind of go through that same process uh, if the new veteran wants to be an accountant or a business owner then I want to connect him or her with a veteran same background same account that are already in that professional field. So, veteran wants to be a teacher, I want to connect that veteran with a teacher or veteran who can help them go through school, help them identify a job, internship. Hmm. That's really cool. Um, did you have, like, someone help you through personally? or? I did. Yeah. Um, yeah, that was one of the pieces for, for what we do is a veteran that I had known Mm -hmm. after I left active uh, convinced me that was the way yeah and you're thankful absolutely yeah um I guess just having I think it's uh no matter who you are just that uh, support group is really really key um well, there's some unique things about Especially when you get into some of the more collective or elite components of the military, those the special forces or a ranger, Navy SEAL, they're taught to deal with their own problems. Mm -hmm. Don't go ask for help, figure it out on your own. Uh, that attitude plus the, the uh, kind of macho mindset that comes along with that, when they leave active duty, if they run into a problem, they're embarrassed to ask for help. Mm. First off, they shouldn't need help because they're who they are. They ought to be able to figure it out on their own. And if they can't, like a double, they be against them because now they can't do it on their own, but they really can't reach out for help because they're supposed to be the kind of person that doesn't need yeah. help. So those things can build up inside of them until the problems become so great that they end up financially broke or relationships are broken. They can yeah. Worse. Because it's just too, too much. Um, they let it go too long until it's so great an issue that it's very hard to come back. Yeah. And of course some of them decide to come back. Well, uh, and to, like, I, <laughs> I think, even, like, I found it really, really hard to talk at first, too, um, or to even ask for help, and I never even... <laughs> considered myself like to be macho or like I never served in the army or anything too so it's like yeah it's one of those things that's it's embarrassing to be personal 
Yeah, it is. Um, so I can't even imagine for like someone who has been trained in that way to actually like to open up. I guess again. Very tough. Yeah. But the way we get to open up is somebody that like them. Yeah. The same training, those same people. Now that person has the moral authority to have a conversation with them or so. Hmm. And to say, hey, it's common people like you and I go through that all the time. So let's talk about how we get through it, what what works. Yeah. Yeah. Try to connect with those new ones that are leaving so they don't go through that. Mm-hmm. Hit it off. Well, as time goes on, too, hopefully it just keeps on growing and growing and growing. Um, I think deep down everyone wants to ask for, for help. So um, I feel that in time we should be able to reach everyone, or at least be... Yeah, that's why we, we try to move everything to the proactive and preventive side. Mm -hmm. We get the word to them as they leave the military. These things could happen to you, here are the warning signs to watch for. Oh, and yeah, to, so that they... are more likely to... Because they've been warned that it's coming, and when they start to recognize it, the signs, yeah. For sure. Um, how, like, how long had you, or are you still currently with the guide? Um, uh, I, the guy that helped me out? Yeah. He's a lifelong friend. Yeah. We've, over the years, we've helped each other. You just, I, I'm guessing you probably just connect with them on just a really deep, intimate like basis just because you're going through such a big thing um i think it would just be totally natural to 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 become a lifelong friend after something like that right yeah um and i think it would be yeah it's a good friend to have uh someone that you can now trust uh and that's another big thing is that um no one should have to feel alone in their whatever they're going through. Um, hmm. 